and welcome back to Swing Therapy. Today's video is a mashup of a series I did on my TikTok that I'm calling All About Necklines. In this video, I will show you four different methods for finishing necklines, including all my tried and true tips for a pucker free finish. I will show you how to do a bias bound neckline, a bias facing neckline, and my favorite method, how to sew a neck facing. Additionally, I will show you how to make a neckline on knit, which is a great skill to have so you don't have to keep stretching to fit your sweatshirt over your head. You will want to save this video to have it ready as a reference whenever you get to the neckline portion of your pattern. I'd love your support with a few simple clicks, like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Your support helps grow our beautiful sewing therapy community. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Let's get started. I will tell you how I sew a bias bound neckline. Don't skip stay stitching the neckline. You need a bias cut strip. It totally depends on your preference but I start sewing from the wrong side. Sew the bias tape at a quarter from the edge. Stretch your bias tape slightly while sewing. Press bias tape towards the seam. Double fold the bias binding slightly hiding the stitch with it. You can trim the seam if necessary. So and give a nice press. Now you have a neat bias bound neckline without any puckers. The next one is how to sew a bias facing neckline. Don't skip stay stitching the neckline. You need a bias cut strip. Sew the bias tape at one third of the edge and start sewing from the right side. Don't stretch the bias tape. Snip along the neckline. Press the bias tape towards the seam and under stitch. Fold the bias tape, wrapping the seam, and fold the wrapped seam again. When sewing, try to make the bodies flat. Give a nice press and now you have a neat looking bias facing neckline. The next one is my favorite method, neck facing. Trace the bodies and make facings. Don't skip stay stitching the neckline. Press the shoulder seams towards opposite directions not to make bulky shoulders. Finish the outer edge of the facing. Pin and sew bodies and facing along the neckline right side together. Snip along the neckline. Press the facing towards the seam and under stitch. Fold the facing in and give the neckline a nice press. You can stitch in the ditch on the shoulders to secure the facing or top stitch along the facing seam. This method means no worries about puckering. The last one is how to sew a neckline on knits. I cut off the old neckband to widen the neckline. First, measure your neckline. I use a string to measure curves easily. Make the length of the band 85% of the length of your neckline and add 1 inch seam allowance. Fold the band in half, right side together and sew. Open the seam and fold in half, lengthwise, right sides together. Mark the size and the centers of front and back. Mark the size and the centers of front and back of the bodies. Match up all the marks. Prepare your ballpoint needle or stretch needle. Adjust your setting. Sew stretching the band to fit. 
Try not to stretch in any line. To attest the surge. A common issue is a wavy seam. You can easily fix it by adjusting the differential fit. Surging from the front will keep the messy parts hidden. Now it's time to top stitch, under stitch. Adjust the settings and sew. Now you have a beautiful new neckline. Which is your favorite method to finish your necklines? Subscribe to my channel if you think this video is helpful for us to make more. Thanks for watching and I will see you on my next video. Annyeong!